అందరికి నమస్కారం ఫ్రెష్ గా ఫ్రెష్ టాపిక్ తో ఈ రోజు మీ ముందుకు రావడం జరిగింది సో క్లబ్ టూ లో ఆరో రోజుకి మీ అందరికి స్వాగతాన్ని తెలియజే స్వాగతం తెలియజేస్తున్నాను మరి స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ వెబినార్ సిరీస్ ఎస్ఈఆర్టి ఏపీ యొక్క అఫీషియల్ ఛానల్స్ అనేటువంటి యూట్యూబ్ అండ్ ఫేస్బుక్ మీద మీకు లైవ్లో వస్తున్నందుకు దాన్ని మీరు వీక్షిస్తున్నందుకు అందరికీ ప్రత్యేకమైనటువంటి ధన్యవాదాలు తెలియజేస్తూ మరి ఈరోజు టాపిక్కి మనం మొదలెట్టేద్దాం అంతా ఉన్నారు రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్గా డాక్టర్ ఆర్ పూర్ణి పూర్ణిమ గారు వెల్కమ్ యూ మేడం అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ పోఖరి శ్రీనివాస్ గారు విత్ అస్ వెల్కమ్ యూ సార్ అండ్ టుడేస్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ ప్రొనౌన్సియేషన్ హౌ ఐ ప్రొనౌన్స్డ్ ద వర్డ్ ప్రొనౌన్సియేషన్ ఐ డోంట్ నో యూ ప్లీజ్ క్లారిఫై దాట్ రిగార్డింగ్ యాక్సెంట్ స్ట్రెస్ అండ్ ఇంటర్నేషన్ దీస్ టాపిక్స్ విల్ బి కవర్డ్ ఇన్ టుడేస్ సెషన్ సో వై టు లెట్ ఫర్దర్ సో ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ గోకర్ శ్రీనివాస్ గారు టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్స్ టు ది వ్యూవర్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు వెబినార్ 6 ఇన్ టుడేస్ సెషన్ వి విల్ బి ఫోకసింగ్ ఆన్ ప్రొనౌన్సియేషన్ ఇన్ ద ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ దట్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఇట్ సచ్ యాస్ యాక్సెంట్ స్ట్రెస్ అండ్ ఇంటోనేషన్ pronunciation plays a very important role in speech in the past few sessions that you have attended in spoken english you must have had a lot of questions in your mind as facilitators and as a team this was our first priority and our aim to initiate the thought processes to question your skill set you look at your skill set as a teacher as how best it is and how it can be improved and how you could translate it into your students some of the questions that would have come to your mind would have been do we need to speak in an accent what english must we follow british or american is phonetics important to my learners how to teach phonetics to students from rural backgrounds with the reading material that you would have received most of y'all could have had an understanding by now in this session we will attempt to explore further to get a deeper understanding on these questions and much more but i would like to remind you that pay key attention to the reading list that is provided in the material i'm sure they'll help you and make you explore further into the subject meanwhile we try our best to accommodate as much as information we can in a one hour session but to get better and the best at anything you need to practice it there's no point seeing a hundred recipes in making a dish in comparison to trying it more to five to six times and mastering it so the more we practice and the more inputs that we gain through these sessions over a period of time we get better at it so we have sowed the seed today not just today in the past one month through clap sessions we don't go to check if the fruit is received on that day itself we wait for the sapling to grow into a tree and then produce fruits so practice as much as you can and absorb as many inputs through these sessions in today's session our focus is on pronunciation but pronunciation happens when we are confident with what we speak the content that we are aware of elaine macdonald quotes if you improve a teacher's self esteem confidence communication skills or stress levels you improve that teacher's overall effectiveness across the curriculum now note the words self esteem confidence confidence stress levels aren't they associated with self especially while speaking an english language most of us while speaking would have had these issues i like to draw your attention to the image on the left you have a teacher who is surrounded with students she says first of all but there is this one child who hears hears it as festival so listen carefully the the phrase and the word first of all festival first of all festival 
there is a slight change in the phoneme sound. In most communication and pronunciation, the variation in these sounds causes a misunderstanding. We will look closely as to how to identify these errors and rectify them. The outcomes for today's session is to understand the importance of pronunciation. We will also look at the goals of pronunciation. Explore the factors that influence pronunciation by closely look, looking at the types of stress, how must our accent be, and intonation. We'll understand techniques to improve pronunciation as an individual and also try and accommodate and customize these techniques into our classroom. We will explore a few tools that you could use every day to practice and improve your pronunciation. We have a reflection session through demos given by an extremely talented team of resource persons and teachers from Andhra Pradesh. One demo would be on a personal level and an individual capacity on how you could improve yourself. And the other demo would be on teacher transaction in your classroom with a sample activity. We begin this session with a story of how pronunciation came into being in English. This happened centuries ago in a region in the world where English was primarily spoken, the UK. UK is made up of four countries. This is a time when none of the other countries were speaking English. They had their own languages. Now, over a period of time, due to political reasons, trade, uh, even religion, English began to spread. There were more speakers of English. Note that the native speakers belong to UK, while the rest of the world had English as their second language. Now, within UK itself, there, were, there are many dialects and accents of English. But there was a particular way of speaking that was spoken by the Queen's family. Back in the day, many linguists felt that is the standard model that the rest of the citizens should try to imitate and practice. It is otherwise called as received pronunciation. The term received pronunciation otherwise shortened as RP, was introduced by phonetician Alexander Ellis in his book, Early English Pronunciation. The Queen's English is also known as the BBC English or the Oxford's English. It was symbolic of class education and for formal purposes. So all educational institutions around UK set it as a standard. If you look at our own traditional systems of language, let's say Telugu. The, the Aksharas was formed years back in the day, but we follow it till today without any change. Likewise, in Tamil as well, we have an old system that is as old as the world itself. So these systems remain to this day. Much like in English, that the sounds are maintained today based on the received pronunciation that was established by the Queen's uh, entourage. Now, from UK, like the English language spread, there were many speakers speaking English as a second language. Now, obviously, within UK, you had a number of dialects of English. You had more dialects now from different countries, such as Indian English, uh, New Zealand English, Australian English, and American English. Now, with these dialects come a variety of pronunciations as well. India is not far behind. We have our own form of English as well, which is accepted. It is called the general Indian English. What exactly is it? There are many varieties of Indian English spoken in our country. I'm sure you and I can make a guess if the speaker belongs to Kerala or Punjab or Gujarat, even if they're speaking in English. That's because of the regional influence. So likewise, in India, you have a Bengali English, Tamil English, Telugu English. However, 
Indian languages have a common phonological system. Like sounds like sa, t, h, r. These sounds are also in English. To Seville, the Central Institute of English as Foreign Language, a number of dedicated researchers did an analysis on these varieties and came up with the general Indian English system. Now note that this system, just like the received pronunciation, does not have any regional influence. It is an accepted way of speaking. Now let us look at another uh, established and a stalwart in linguistics, T. Bala Subramanian, in his textbook, uh, in his book called A Textbook for English Phonetics for Indian Students. He clarifies that both these systems, that is the Indian English and the received pronunciation system exist, coexist. But the received pronunciation system is not recommended to be used ex exhaustively. But what you and I as speakers of English must do is to be able to be in a position to make phonological contrasts, to identify the difference between pin and bin. That can be established only if we pronounce it well. Excuse me. Is it confusing already? So do we follow received pronunciation or Indian English? Let's look at the goals of pronunciation first. When we speak, we need to ensure that these three goals are achieved. It has to be intelligible, credible, and personal. What do you mean when you say you need to sound intelligible? It means that when I speak to you in English, you should be able to understand and receive the message without any confusion. That way, we, the, as an audience and as a speaker, we can establish a meaningful communication. You need to be credible. <laughs> Ability of an individual to influence the listener through valid points meaningful discussion and exchange of ideas. How is that possible? That is possible when you use the right words and pronounce them well. If I mix it up here and there, you would lost, lo lose interest in what I'm trying to explain to you. And you might even doubt if the information that I'm giving you is valid. Next, it has to be personal. When I say it has to be personal, it means that you retain your native identity, but not your regional influence, that is the mother tongue influence. Native identity in terms of, you can be identified as an Indian speaker of English without any regional influence. So you could go on YouTube and find a number of speeches given by Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, who belongs to Andhra Pradesh, no doubt. But if you listen to his speech, there are, very, there are no regional influences at all. This is a classic example of a standard Indian English. In fact, if you, look at, if you listen closely to the webinars that have happened in the past month, the English spoken, let's say, by Shobha Ma'am, Suman Garu, is neutral. You wouldn't be able to identify if she's from Chennai or Rajasthan or any part of the country because she has a standard way of speaking. So note that the regional influence has to be taken up. So with these as your goals, what must be your goal? As a teacher, we must model the right use of language to our students. This point a number of times by a professor and he said that when we are teachers we need to be the authority of the right usage of English. So as a teacher how good are you in your pronunciation skills? How thorough are you? That's something you need to reflect on much before thinking on how do I teach it to our students. Next, your personal goal should be 
I would like to develop my English accent by sounding intelligible and credible. My speech and pronunciation must be understood by other speakers of English. So as teachers, as professionals, the English that you use in the classroom is standard English, otherwise known as standard language. What is standard English? A variety of English accepted for official purposes in a Standard English is a version found in printed English in newspapers and books. It is used in government institutions, schools, mass media, and in a formal or official context. Like most Commonwealth countries, and due to a lot of historical reasons in terms of setting up of educational institutions, we have for a very long time followed the British English that is received pronunciation. There, are, uh, there is American English as well, which a few schools who follow a different curriculum follow. But traditionally, we stick to the British English, much like most of the Commonwealth countries. We use the received pronunciation here because all the dictionaries that are published today still maintain the, uh, the system that was created years and years ago, just like our classical system. In fact, if you look at our news agencies, they still speak in a classical dialect. Tamil news, for instance, still continue speaking in classical Tamil. But that does not mean that on a day-to-day -day basis, we speak in that way. It is accepted to speak in a normal way as well with other influences. So there is a perfect mix and balance of using classical language and a, a discourse that is accepted on a day-to-day -day basis. So what are the systems that retain in a day-to-day -day base as well? First is the sound. There is no compromise on the sound. We still stick to how it was given in years ago. However, with a few accommodations. Like for instance, in received pronunciation, the R is silent. So a word like C-A-R, car, is pronounced as car but it is accepted if you'd say car. Likewise, grammar rules. Grammar rules are strictly followed and it is based on the British English system. Semantics, the meanings of word, again, the dictionary plays a crucial role in establishing if it is a noun or if it is an adjective or verb. And syntax, the structure. The structure of the sentence as to where the subject and the object goes it is still based on the classical system. So let's look at phonological knowledge. Now in, in pronunciation, phonological knowledge is crucial because you need to know the sounds of the language first. It is these sounds together that form words when you utter. So it is an underlying design or blueprint of each sound that serves as a basis for variation in speech. So as teachers, you need to understand the sounds and you also need to hone the skill of identifying the issues of these sounds that your students are facing. You need to understand patterns of speech sounds. Like for instance, one letter of an alphabet stands for more sounds and the same sounds are represented by different letters of the alphabet. English is a funny language that way. In most of our classical languages, like a previous sessions that we have got an input, it said that traditional language, Indian languages have reflect the same sound and the graphene, the letter. So basically, there are 21 consonants. However, if you listen to the sounds, there are 24 varieties of it. There are five vowels. However, if you listen closely, there are 20. And amongst 20, there are a few divisions as well. Like for instance, let's look closely. The IPA chart. This IPA chart is the standard way of learning pronunciation. 
If you look at it closely, there is a very beautiful distinction between vowels and consonants right below. If you look at vowels, they are divided into two. Monophthongs, for instance, are single vowel sounds, which are otherwise known as pure vowel. And in this group as well, you have long vowels, which are five in number. Now, how do you identify long vowels? They are the ones which are represented with dots. Door, diphthongs. If you look at your vowel sounds, there are two vowel sounds that mix together and form a single sound, like ear in here, a in wait. So there are two vowel sounds that are in. Likewise, if you look down below, are consonants. Consonants, the most of the symbols are quite similar to our alphabet system. There are very few changes in terms of sound, if it is a nasal sound with an in, in sing and ch in cheese, j in, in judge. We have provided two links in the description bar. So soon after the session, do have a look at the links. They explain each sound with a lot more clarity and in-depth understanding as to how it is articulated and how the movement of your mouth and lips and tongue as well is involved. Now coming back to the factors that influence pronunciation. First is accent, stress, and intonation. We'll explore these areas in depth. What is accent? A speaker's accent refers to a style of pronouncing words that affect the sound. There are many accents of English that are spoken around the world. My favorite accent is the British accent. So there are different accents like that. You have the American accent, Chinese accent, and within India as well, we have different accents. We all speak in an accent. Would you agree with me? Well, every individual has his or her own distinct accent while speaking a language. If you look at your family and you speak, if it's a family speaking Telugu, the way your parents speak would be very different to how your children speak, although they speak the same language in the same household. In fact, even you and your sibling or a close friend of yours would speak Telugu very differently with a few changes here sound. That is called an accent. Accents provide cues to an individual's first language or the region. Accent is also influenced by the mother tongue. Now you must be wondering that how do individuals have an accent? Let's look at a physiological perspective. Now every individual has a physically different vocal tract. Like the size of your fingers would be very different to that of the size of your brother's or your sister's fingers. Likewise, the vocal tract would vary in different ways. Consequently, in purely physical terms, every individual will pronounce the sounds differently. There are then potentially millions of physically different ways of saying the simple word me. Will not pronounce the word me in a physically identical manner on every occasion. For example, even handwritings. We have very different handwritings. That's because we are, are the physical aspect of our hand, the way we hold the pencil, is very different to that of a friend or a parent or a sibling. Likewise, the way we produce sounds are very different. Maybe in terms of a regional difference, it is blaring, like an American accent and a Chinese accent. But even amongst us, if you look, listen very closely, there will be very different changes. You could compare the accent of, let's say, Shobagaru and Munishitagaru. 
though they speak Spanish standard English, they have a very slight change in the way they deliver the sound. So what are the factors? One is mother tongue influence. Now, this mother tongue influence is something that we need to look at closely because we need to try to minimize it. There are social cultural factors as well. If you're living in a city or a village, so your whole exposure to the language is different. You're learning context. If you're learning English for the first time, you would have a different accent. And the more you practice it, you'll have a different accent altogether. Likewise, purpose and need. Some professions require a particular accent. It was not long ago, like a decade or so, where IT professionals, specifically call center employees, required to have an American was a professional requirement. Just like we need to follow a neutral accent. Neutral accent in terms of the regional influences don't interfere while pronouncing English words. It doesn't originate from a region. Intonation rely on the form. So M is meaning, P is pronunciation, and F is form. Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? And what is the context that you're delivering the noun or adjective or the phrase? Practice speaking without the tune of L1. Now, every regional language in India has a particular tune. You could also imitate the tune of a language that you don't speak, like a Punjabi or, or Malayalam. Now, likewise, the language that we speak as L1 also has a tune. We need to be mindful that we take away the tune while speaking. Practice speaking English in an everyday context. The more familiar you are with the patterns of sound, the more mindful you will be in order to avoid those uh, influences from the regional language. Don't imitate a foreign accent that may confuse the listener. Now, there are two aspects to it. Supposing you have been in a foreign country or you have had a lot of exposure with foreign nationals, you are bound to be influenced by their way of speaking. Let's say I was in the US for six months. So that way I had an authentic input to my accent. But what if I was born and brought up in Chennai and have not spoken to many nationals and probably just watched one or two movies but just for the sound of it, I try and imitate it. That is something we shouldn't be doing because we do not have an authentic source. So we spoke about accent in, in length. That is the way we deliver sounds while speaking. Let us look at stress. In phonetics, stress refers to the emphasis laid on certain areas while speaking. Stress relies on the content and the context. Because a lot of emotions or the attitude of the speaker is revealed through what he applies. In English language, there are two types of stress. One is the word stress and the other the sentence stress. Now when you look at any word, the first thing that you would do is try to break it up. You, when you break it up, you find sounds. Now, these sounds are called as syllable. Applying stress to one of the syllables in a word to clear speech and meaning is word stress. Likewise, sentence stress is emphasizing certain words in a sentence to convey a particular meaning effectively. Let's look at word stress in closer detail. In the two images given here, the words are quite similar with desert and desert. How do you find the meaning of it? Let us look at the first image on the left. Desert. Now the stress is indicated with the hype after the I sound, right? So that is where you indicate the stress. If you look at the image on the right, it is right before desert. 
So if I were to speak to someone and accommodate the wrong stress, the meaning changes completely. Let us look at another example. A word that has the same spelling, P-R-E-S-E-N-T. But stress plays an important role in conveying the meaning. When I say present, it means a gift. Present. If I say present, it is something that I'm delivering a, in, uh, an information perhaps with a PPT. So here I am to present today's session. But if I switch the stress, this is your present for your birthday. The meaning changes. Also note that present is a noun. Present is a verb. So your pronunciation has a deep impact based on the stress that you give. So let us look at closely at syllables because syllables are where the stress is applied. It is a unit of sound in a word. Now every word has a minimum of one syllable like car, book. A syllable contains a vowel sound that is accompanied by consonant sounds. It could be a combination of a vowel and consonant, that is a VC, or CVC, a consonant vowel and a consonant sound. We will not go into the depth of the seven types of syllables because that is provided in your reading materials. But for the session, understand that syllables are important to be divided within the word to judge where the stress has to be lined. So the number of vowel sounds in a word equals to the numbers. In every word, there is one stressed syllable. And that this stressed syllable is emphasized more than the others. There are also some words which carry a secondary stress. But as beginners, to first focus on the most stressed, the primary stressed syllable. When we utter a word, we stress only the vowel sounds and not the consonant sounds. Syllables create rhythmic character to a language. Entertainment, entertainment. Applying stress to the right syllable in the word is important for pronunciation. So let us look at word stress. How do I know that book has one syllable? There are three strategies that we use in the primary class that can be applied even to learners who are beginning to learn English. The first one is the whenever you utter a word, listen closely the number of times you hear the verb book, ooh sound, one. The next is the chin method. This is one of my most favorite and also a favorite amongst the young kids that I teach. You need to place your hand right below your chin, right here, and say the word, book. Count the number of times your chin moves. Book, one. Let's do another word, such as entertainment. Entertainment, four times my chin moves. So count the number chin moves. Let me count the number of syllables my name has. Poor, ni, ma. Three syllables. You could count the number of syllable names as well. The next is the clap method. Very similar to the listen method and the chin method. Where you time you hear a vowel sound. Entertainment. Four. So these are four, three methods that you could start practicing. You might lose it in the first or the second book which is where the dictionary will help you to ensure where to identify split the words, which is otherwise called as syllabification. So once you divide the words into different syllable units, how can you put, identify the stress and where to stress? There are a couple of rules. Rules have been changed and worked on for the longest of time. They are not absolute which means some words would not fall. But by and large, in majority of words, this, these are the rules that are followed. Let us look at single syllable words, like a book or a car. These words don't carry stress. 
Next, if you look at book and a car, there's just one vowel sound, the double O in book, O sound, and car, C-A-R, the A, uh, car sound. There's just one syllable. The next is when, what if a word has two syllables? Now, if the word is a noun or an adjective, the first syllable is stressed, covered. Now, if you look, let us do the chin technique here. Covered, twice, two syllables. Now, if you, since it is a noun, the, syllable, the stress comes before the k sound, the so covered. If you notice in the transcription, the p sound is missing. This is something that you need to make note of when the sound is deleted of the word. So, p is silent, covered. The next is verbs. Now verbs with two syllables, the stress does not come right in the beginning, but it shifts. The second syllable is stressed. Let us look at the word observe. Observe. Two syllable. It is in the second syllable that the stress is given, that is observe. The next is three syllable words. Now in three syllables again, the rules for nouns Adjectives and verbs are same as the ones that we follow in syllable words. However, if there are, uh, let's say, suffixes that are included, the list is given in the table there, such as er, or, ly, and if it is a, a noun or adjective, the stress would come right in the beginning. Beautiful. Beautiful. Three syllables. Likewise, if it is a verb, envision, Vision, the ver sound is stressed. Look at an examples with suffixes like referee. It's towards the end. The shift goes from the first to the second to the third syllable. You get confused with so many rules. But these are the basics of something when you, when you can identify, when you get a new set of words. The first thing that you do is divide them into syllables. Identify if they are nouns or verbs. Look at their spellings, if they have suffixes. So accordingly, this is like a table, kind of like a code for you to apply the stress. But what if there are words with four syllables? Now, again, you have a list of suffixes. Now, these particular suffixes are, are like a code for you to recognize that the stress would go on the second syllable. Photography. If I say photography or photography, the pronunciation changes. So it is photography. Likewise, if the suffix is T I O N, S I O N, or I C, the stress shifts to the third syllable, which is education. Education. So these are with words. How about phrasal verbs? Verbs are when it's a combination of verbs like get out, get in, switch off. So when you have phrasal verbs, it is the second word that is stressed. Switch off. Switch off the fan. You don't say switch off the fan. You, you stress on the off. Likewise, compound words. In the compound words, the rules of nouns and adjectives are the same as even if it isn't a compound word. So the stress would be on the first syllable, like paintbrush. The per sound is enunciated a lot more. Likewise, well-known and compound word like old-fashioned, the f sound is stressed more. It's not old-fashioned, it's old-fashioned. So what you could do now is with these rules, make a table and include your words up in the example column. Shift it to my new words column and try to identify in which category they belong. So as a teacher, you could have a framework for every lesson through this table. We know that word stress is usually based on how we do the syllabification and the form of it, whether it's a noun or verb or adjective. Stress can also be applied to sentences. Now, if you look at sentences, 
they are word made of content words on grammatical or structural words what are content words content words are words that carry meaning such as noun adjectives verbs adverbs so stress is applied to these words and the structural words get a lesser prominence structural words would be like and is the such as prepositions conjunctions let us look at a few examples given in the box below so let us identify the nouns first here i ate cake dessert or dessert so these are the words that would be stressed the next the cat and the monkey climbed the tree the nouns are the cat and monkey and climbed is the verb and tree. so they are stressed another area that you could look at when you apply sentence stresses if you remove the structural words the meaning is still communicated let us look at a third sentence the sentence this and be true are good for your eyes now if i remove and are for the the meaning is still conveyed so it's carrots be true good eyes you would be able to understand the meaning so this is also another strategy to identify to stress on words that only give you the meaning the last sentence the forest is surrounded by mountains remove the structural words the r and by forest surrounded mountains yes stress now before we go to intonation i'd like to point out that in most classroom environments we try to make more emphatic when we uh, we are more when we pronounce that is what make the audience or your students to pay close attention to the sound when we are speaking however it will automatically find a natural way of speaking to do as you are when you teach next is intonation which is all about in emotions and the attitudes that you carry trying to motivate your audience all that could be expressed through intonation so what is intonation of a language it is the patterns of variation of pitch of the voice the way the pitch varies it is the rise and fall of sounds while speaking so when you speak if, if you listen closely you would raise your volume in certain areas and you would sort of reduce it a little this is very evident if you people if you notice people who are performing such as actors politicians uh, news agency uh, journalists they vary the pitch and the flow of the voice in order to give an effect to the language that they are speaking an effect for curiosity or asking a question now when you speak pronunciation is effective when you enunciate with an intonation that is the tone just like a music every song carries a tone isn't it if it is a song for motivation it has a tone to it it has a tune to it if it is a song which has a romantic setup there's a different tune if it is a uh, any song for that matter has a different tune based on the emotion likewise when we speak intonation plays an important role in uh, presenting the tone of our language of our message now there are six patterns of intonation sorry seven patterns but on in a basic level let us just stick to the three patterns now this comes with practice before we go into the table i'd like to uh, inform you that in the beginning when you speak you might find it a bit difficult or sometimes even artificial when you speak but the more you practice it will come natural now let us look at the intonation and its types intonation is produces the musicality of language so there is falling intonation there's rising intonation and then there's fall and rise intonation so when do we lower our intonation when do we increase it 
Let's have a look. Falling intonation is used when the voice falls in the first stressed syllable of a phrase. But what are the purpose when you're declaring something such as a fact or you're placing a command or exclamations of a shock or WH questions or tag questions? These are the purposes in which your intonation falls. So when it falls, it goes from a high to low. I live in Chennai. So Chennai goes low. I live in US. What is your name? Shut the door. So it goes downwards. Let us look at the next form. That is the rising intonation. In which your voice rises at the end of the sentence. This you would notice when you ask questions such as yes or no questions or stating lists. Let us look at a few examples. Are you hungry? Would you like some water? Buy me some milk, rice, bread and some cheese. This, in all three sentences, my intonation rises towards the end. Likewise, fall and rise intonation. This is when the voice falls and then rises. You would use this intonation when you're expressing a doubt or you're trying to sound polite. Is this your camera? It might rain today. It might rain today. So you see it drops and then goes high. So when you are speaking, try to reflect on the purpose. Are you asking a question? Are you trying to be polite? Or are you are you doubtful or are you presenting a fact or are you, are you a fact or a statement? So based on your purpose, try to identify the tone in which you present. Practice it a number of times. As I said earlier, it might find, you might find it a little weird, but think of it as an acting exercise when you're practicing lines in drama. The more you practice, it becomes natural and your brain automatically fine tunes your system to produce that intonation. In fact, this intonation is supplied even to the languages that you otherwise speak, that is your L1. So use that capacity that you have in your L1 here. Identify the purpose and raise your tone and fluctuate it accordingly. Now with all that we spoke on accent, stress and pronunciation, there's there's so much that we have covered in the shortest span of time. Remember that these are areas that you need to identify with now. You need to explore now. We are testing waters now. So to reach proficiency, it takes a lot of practice. So how does this, how can we do this practice? So there are three strategies that has worked for all age groups. One is the language immersion strategy where you immerse yourself with the language in all forms. So there's intensive learning and active engagement in speaking, reading, writing, and listening of English texts. So you go out of your way to read a lot of English books, to listen to a lot of English uh, material, maybe or probably to, on TV. So you immerse yourself, you create an environment which has a lot of exposure to English. Next is practice. Exercise language skills regularly and repeatedly in order to improve and attain proficiency. Like in the beginning of the session, I said, in order to master anything or to gain proficiency, unless you put into practice, you will not be able to reach there. So there is no point in reading and looking at 10,000 videos of making a dish. Learning happens when I make that dish in my kitchen. So you would have to practice it. We look at practicing and how we can create these opportunities shortly. Next is communication. Participate and share ideas in English. Be with your colleagues, with your students, friends and family. It may, as I say, it may sound foreign for you. But think where you can start. Make use of the opportunities that you have. You might face a lot of, uh, you know, jokes on you as to why are you speaking on English all of a sudden. But that shouldn't stop you from practicing the language. 
the more you start speaking in english the more responses you would get in english as well so communicate communicate with a purpose in english next techniques now some techniques like i said practicing is very important so what could you do to practice as a teacher imitation and shadowing this has been very successful for actors for instance when they imitate if you imitate a fellow actor the way he delivers his dialogues you don't just imitate the words but the way he delivers it as well so you have a rich resource of a uh, uh, resource of videos on youtube and other portals as well pick up a speech for instance and eat it it tenses or repeat those interesting words that you heard repeat it as many times you can that way you are imitating that sound or shadowing that sound and that would be internalized by you over a period of time next is intonation practice common words and phrases such as greetings good morning good afternoon or hi i am so and so so these are basic phrases that you could practice intonation with next is record yourself something that is very interesting uh, when you get feedback is there are a number of areas that you might not know that you're going wrong or you're really good at so when you record yourself you could get a you could give yourself a self reflective feedback or also collaborate with a fellow peer and get a feedback from him or her so record a video of yourself while you speak in english it could it could be a lesson that you are planning you could read aloud practicing to read aloud is also a way to identify where you struggle where you need practice and also be mindful of listening to the way you speak that way you'll be able to reflect on how is your intonation are you trying to express joy is it a question you're raising is it a command so you will be able to understand the finer aspects of your speech and your accent which will give the ultimate character to the way you speak next is word stress now english has a lot of words with different spellings now these are a few ways that you could practice with heteronyms which have same spellings with different pronunciation like for instance you have the word here just one moment yeah tear but the same word can be pronounced tear is something that your eyes produce tears but tear is something that you like to tear a piece of paper now tear is a noun so where does the stress go it goes right in the beginning but like come again let us check how many syllables it has it has one syllable tear so is there a stress in it no there are no stress there's no stress in tear but the pronunciation varies which is why as i said the rules that were listed in certain words would not be applicable and the sounds as well would change next is homonym identical pronunciation and spelling pen pen as a noun is a pen that you use to write i'm going to pen my thoughts as a word as a verb how would you change now pen has just one uh, syllable but the difference in it would vary when you when you speak i'd like to pen my thoughts could you pass me the pen so the context also changes homophones the spellings are different but with identical pronunciation like do and do the sounds are the same do is a deer a female deer and do is something that you make with wheat and water for making chapatis likewise homographs they have same spelling but different pronunciation minute sorry minute and minute minute is for the time and minute is something that is a small detail now you would know that there are few certain words with the same sound as much as it is important to pronounce words with different sounds as a speaker you must be aware of the words that carry the same sound as well so you wouldn't pronounce do as dow because you would know that it is pronounced as do as an animal and do as a 
the mixture of wheat and water. So you need to identify and segregate your words according according to the uh, the purpose it serves. Next is minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are words which have which are different by one sound. The spelling changes with one letter, for instance. This is one of the most basic exercises that we teach children in the primary class. Combinations such as cat, mat, bin, pin, sin. So these combination of words help them to identify the sound which changes with one phone. Next is articulator exercises. There are, a, in any phonetic class or pronunciation class, if you were to go abroad, they start off with exercises that you give to your mouth. The way you move your mouth, the, you blow air out, in and out. If you go on YouTube itself, type in articulator exercises. There are a number of exercises that you could do that would help you also to move away from your regional influence. Now note that these techniques that I suggested is something that you could work on yourself. Now some of it you could take to your classroom. Let's just say word stress that I gave such as the claps and the hands. Maybe you could incorporate in, you, in your classroom situation uh, uh, when you're teaching new words or reading aloud for instance. Uh, so try to customize these techniques into your classroom situation. Minimal pairs, we have a, a demo that would come up shortly. It's something part of your textbooks itself. So you have a rich resource. Now all you need to do is customize these techniques for yourself and for your students. You could plan accordingly. Pick up a video for a week to imitate and shadow. You could imitate and shadow a song as well. You could record yourself giving a, a one minute speech on let's say pollution. So choose two to three techniques for a week and try to come up with an activity for yourself and for your students. Now what tools can you improve for your pronunciation? The, the uh, is your tool. The phonetic ch phonemic chart is your tool. But apart from that, you could go on to these uh, portals that is available online. Most of it is free that you could practice. One is the Sound Foundations Interactive Phonemic Chart. It is a free, there's a free version available and a full and a paid version as well. But it, it has a feature to interact with the sounds. So you listen to the sounds, it's easier for you to internalize it. The Sounds Pronunciation app, quite similar to the previous one where you can, it's not as, not as interactive. However, it is quite a useful tool nonetheless. Forvo, it is a free pronunciation dictionary. You can listen to how words, including names of places, are pronounced by people from different, for people from around the world. So you would be able to gauge different accents and how they modulate it. So it brings in a more uh, uh, speakers of other languages as well. English Central. This is one of my most favorite websites because there's a number of resources and activities that you could access and incorporate for your own development and in your classroom. Ship or Sheep. There's a book as well that is suggested in your reading material. Uh, it's a book that has a number of uh, activities that you could plan. I'm sorry, I just moved to the next slide. Moving on is the tools to improve uh, in an online way, supposing you don't have any of these apps and you can't do much uh, as such. Go on to Google, just type the word and add pronunciation. Immediately, this is what you get on your screen. You could put book pronunciation, water pronunciation. They split it into a syllable like you see. And if you see T double E is stressed, so you can identify syllables stressed as well. You have an option to choose Indian English, British English, or uh, American English. Likewise, record yourself. After you listen, record yourself, and you can get to hear. Try to go as close as to what you hear. You could also vary the pace. If you wanted to be said as teacher or teacher, you could vary the pace to listen more carefully. This is for people who do not have access to 
downloading multiple apps. Choose five words every day. Put it on Google and put pronunciation and collect all these details. Next. So what are the tasks that you could do? Along with the strategies that I suggested, these are the tasks that you can do. But note that no matter what you do in spoken English, all three aspects such as accent, stress and intonation are developed parallelly. They play, maybe their roles shift in the amount of priority you give to each aspect, but they all work together. Well, the first thing is sing songs in English. <coughs> I remember when the movie Titanic came out, all of us were in this craze to learn the title song of that movie. That most of us could pick up a lot of words also that came up in that, in that song, the My Heart Will Go On. But you could also notice the variations that the singer uses. This is a strategy that as adults that we could do, learn new English songs. Or you could also make your learners to learn new English songs. It would be a lot of fun. Because most of these songs have an ample uh, example and exposure to the rhythm and rhyme aspect of the next is daily conversations this was suggested earlier as well make it a practice or a rule to give it is common now for us with our whatsapp groups to give good morning and good evening in written why not make it in a spoken form as teachers i'm sure you'll be doing it which means that you have to go beyond good morning and good afternoon how was your day today did do you have a busy day today what are your plans for today? So try to grow the, the amount of content that you're trying to express, right? The next is read aloud stories, newspaper articles, and advertisements. Now, certainly you are practicing the words that you're familiar with. You will also identify words that you, you come across for the first time. So it gives you practice to go to the dictionary or an online resource to check with the pronunciation and practice it again. This is something that you could do it as your students do as well. Simple articles. Now, this, uh, now if make note that irrespective of what context you belong to, a rural or an urban context, you could simplify the task. Let's just say simple headlines of the city that you live in or the town that you live in. Focus on those areas and create fun tasks such as role play, or you could do a small play as well as skit where you deliver dialogues in English using the words that you have learned for pronunciation. Which moves on to the next one, that is practicing dialogues from movies. As much as we enjoy learning dialogues from uh, movie, regional movies, try looking up for interesting English movies. There are a number of platforms that are streaming them for free or a very minimal cost. Uh, so as, as uh, low as $1.99, if I may remember. So try to look at English movies and documentaries and, and practice the dialogues or words that you find interesting. Pronunciation drills. Now, pronunciation drills, obviously, you can't do it for your own self, but something that you do in your classroom. Like I did a demo during the, phone in, uh, the phonics session where you do a whole group demo, small group demo, within pairs and individuals. Focus first on a bigger group and then downsize it to an individual. Next is challenge yourself. Make it a point that you find new words that are interesting to you and challenge yourself to pronounce it. When, when I learn a new word, I kind of hesitate to use it the first time or the second time. But I challenge myself to try and find out a context in which I can put in that word and utter it. So challenge yourself, don't feel shy and have any inhibitions. It, it, errors and mistakes are something that even people who are native speakers of the, language, of the language would make. In spite of having spoken Tamil all my life long, I still make mistakes. So it's fine as long as I know and I'm aware to rectify and correct and practice it. So these are the suggested tasks that you could apply to yourself or to your students. Now, without further ado, we have two fantastic demos prepared by Ms. M. Rachna and Dr. Kori Nanaji. M. Rachna, sorry, Raharu, would do a demo on a task that you can set. And Dr. Kori Nanaji would 
re reflect on his way as a teacher to promote pronunciation skills for himself and the teachers around him as well as his students. Uh, I request Ismail Garu to play the videos. Sure, ma'am. Uh, stop sharing of your screen, ma'am. Sorry. Hello everyone, I am Rachna. I work as a school assistant English in Government High School, Rajanpet, Shepard District. In today's demo sir, session, the video is I am going not to available. present on how to say it's fine, sir. In the video is not yes. seen. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, people, people can watch, but you people may not be. Once. Hello everyone, I work as a school assistant English in Government High School, Rajanpet, Kadapa District. In today's demo session, I am going to present on how to set up a pronunciation activity in three simple steps. Come, join me in my class on minimal pairs. And it is a revision class. So, actually these minimal pairs are introduced in new class 1 and class 2 English textbooks. And it is called practice time. So, shall we practice this type of language games and activities to reinforce them? Okay then. So, these are the minimal pairs or word families are very useful to improve our pronunciation in our classroom. So, without any ado, let us start. For this activity, we have three steps. The first step is all the words apart from the textbook so for example i have prepared like this minimal pairs so here i have prepared so many words and then we have to second one is we have to drill we have to drill we have to give practice to familiarize the words with pictures so they know the meanings and then they associate the words with the pictures, with the help of the pictures. And then the third one is introducing the activity. So here we are going to introduce one attractive and interesting activity that is called find your partner. So in this game, um, as a teacher, I have prepared some slips. So here... I have prepared slips like this, fan, man, uh, tub, log, I have prepared some um, slips and then I give the duration of this activity is 3 minutes. So uh, level means multigrade and multilevel. We can use this activity as multigrade and multilevel. So with the help of this chicks, so teacher first uh, prepare the slips and then uh, I'll distribute all the slips to the students and then within three minutes they have to go to everybody they have to read the word aloud and then they have to go to another uh, children child or a kid and then uh, he must he or she must ask I got this word and what is your word so this is the procedure of the game before conducting this activity we have to give clear instructions. So, for example, uh, for me, as for me, I'll give like this. And you'll have your own style of giving instructions. Hello, children. How are you? So, now we are going to play a game, language game. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Okay, then. So, take your bags away from you. And then keep aside all your books, give away, stand in a circle and then now I am going to give you some slips. Take it. And then how to play this game is, so here this is one tub and this is dog. If uh, Radhika gets a tub and uh, Sindhu got dog, uh, Radhika went to Sindhu and asked, uh, I got tub and what did? and Sindhu says I got dog so these are not the minimal pairs so we have practiced this 
chart fan man dog log tub cup boy toy so uh, so what is the minimal pair for the tub cup so here it's not matching so um, if it is matched with the thing they'll go and sit in their places otherwise so sindhu has to go to another boy or girl and ask i got tub what is your word my word is tub and what is your word so we have to give one structure also i my word is tub and what is your word so then that person will tell ah i got thank you i got a man and what is your word so here like that uh, this game continues until this tub gets cup this partner and after completing this they'll stick this to one uh, chart or something else and they'll go and sit so after that the main part of the activity is feedback the teacher may ask the students uh, what is your word and then what is your partner's word so that remember the words and they can use the words in the context when they find the word they know the pronunciation of the word also so c u t cut but p u t put so here this type of um, confusion they get rid of this type of confusion in their lives uh, my in my class this game is a huge success and i hope this activity will help you to uh, come out of your inhibitions and everything in your classrooms thank you so much like uh, i'm sure that you'd be aware that the video was on minimal pairs so in your textbooks you would have ample exercises for minimal pairs so a number of you must be wondering like in a primary classroom how would i bring the phonetic transcription and teach you are not expected to take the symbols along with you to show your learners and confuse them you could familiarize them with the sounds and that could be done through minimal pairs like rachna garu just said like uh, p u t put how you don't say uh, you pronounce it differently isn't it with b u t but so you give them the variation using minimal pairs or else you could use a pictorial phonemic chart that was shared in the phonics session in the previous clip uh, session we will now proceed to the next video by dr kori nana ji where he talks about his personal reflection as an english teacher yes sir you could read అందరికి నమస్కారం ఐ ఆమ్ డాక్టర్ కోడి నానాజీ ఐ వర్క్ ఏజ్ స్కూల్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ జిల్లా బ్రిస్త స్కూల్ గుంటపల్లి పాయకరపేట మండలం విశాఖపట్నం డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ టుడే ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు షేర్ మై ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ ఇన్ క్రియేటింగ్ లెర్నింగ్ సర్కిల్స్ ఐ స్టార్ట్ ఇన్ లెర్నింగ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ when i was promoted as school assistant in english one of my fears while speaking was mispronouncing words if any non native speaker of telugu language pronounce meeru chustunnara meeru chustunnara it means differently over a period of time i read many books listen to songs news stories in english to however i still wanted my pronunciation to improve that's when i created my learning circle are you in a similar situation to what you can do is create a group of 3 to 4 teachers in your school who have the same goal to improve the pronunciation it would be beneficial to invite the english teacher to your learning circle choose any one strategy shared in today's session as an activity three to four activities per week and select some activities such as learning an english song recording yourself speaking on a topic or even reading aloud newspaper articles 
prepare well using a dictionary and other online sources to focus on a neutral accent appropriate stress and intonation present your work to your learning circle listen to others presentations actively in short you collect your feedback from your learning circle as well as provide effective feedback as well and practice different areas and concepts do you know that you can create a learning circle with your students too i had created one learning circle in my subject a student of mine went on to get a doctorate in pharmacy he was an average student however a learning circle proved as an excellent strategy to learn collaboratively different concepts for my learners dear teachers please note that this strategy is successful because you became a lot more self aware while learning the language you are engaged because you enjoy the activity you get the you get to learn through a collaborative effort you gain a lot from peer feedback too most importantly you get to practice pronunciation so create your learning group today with your teachers and among your students practice and learn together all the best thank you i'll meet you in another interesting session until then take care have a nice day this we come towards we come to the end of the session and we would like to get the questions from your side as well uh, ensure that you practice and use these techniques and strategies and see the growth for yourself in your improvement so we could have the questions thank you very much madam yeah question from uh, dharmala jay kumar bhimili vishakhapatnam why do the rules for marking stress and uh, intonation keep changing don't we have any fixed rules so basically the rules that we are shared on the slides are established are from the best of the best books that are available that are uh, written by renowned linguists the most linguists no matter how much of experience they have they say that rules are not complete or absolute there are a few words here and there that would not follow those rules but if you compare the majority of rules that as uh, the majority of words or phrases that follow the rules it would give you a basic understanding to ensure that errors the rules change is some change in not just in language but anywhere that you apply a rule they change to accommodate change or newness that comes to it but rest be assured that the rules that are shared here are something that you could also refer to grammar books like ren and martin and the ones the new age books as well that you could apply on a day to day yes thank you second part of his question why does signature signature word have a z sound but the sign does not yeah that's the funny aspect of english language where we have where certain sounds are not pronounced as well like for example i had given for cupboard where p is silent that is something which has to do with the language system itself which has evolved over time and note that these words in english most of it have come is a job english is a germanic language so a lot of la words have come from uh, indo european languages like french and german and uh, latin so on and so forth so their influences are also there in pronunciation like for example an english word called deja vu is the french word but if you look at the spelling and you try to uh, pronounce it it's very different which is why we go back to the first session uh, on pronunciation where it was reinforced that english language the letters do not present the uh, the sound it you have to go to the phonetic transcription it's not the spelling thank you very much madam uh, here is sir. one more question uh, ma'am uh, so when we start pronunciation practice to students should we start with words or sentences ideally it's best you start with words 
because you start with words and then you put those words into meaningful sentences so it is almost like building the foundation right with individual words and forming it accordingly as a one uh another question is that uh, how can we make use of language labs and language clubs to improve students pronunciation so language any language lab or uh, or a club will be successful only with what you as a teacher plan and your activities for the month so if you're going to plan activities based on movies or play plan activities for debates and discussion so come up with a theme and based on that theme divide students into groups it works best when you work, make them into big groups and small groups plan a project like where they're going to do a presentation or a mock united nations debate so plan according to the theme and based on the theme come up with the tasks thank you very much madam thank you very much madam another question from sri devi hindupur uh, anandpur district and uh, munikoti srinivasa sharma madanpalli what is the difference between accent and pronunciation which is important for primary classes so accent if you look at it is is an individual's way of uh, pronouncing a word pronunciation is something that is common to all of us irrespective of where we belong which geographical location we belong so when you look at it on an individual level pronunciation is purely a linguistic a language system that has to be followed pronunciation is important when you pronounce words correctly eventually like i said your vocal tract is different so accordingly your accent will also change which is why uh, like the quote that was shared the word my is it could be is pronounced very differently from you and me and anybody else so pronunciation is key thank you very much madam Uh, there are few words posted by many pos uh, words were posted by the many members in the comment section yes, who want to sir. listen uh, how to pronounce yes so with uh, if i were to prioritize words over questions words you could check with your dictionary as well you could use the tools that are given we'll use this session to clarify questions because that would be a greater yes. benefit yes exactly and uh, uh, elus zakir what is meant by primary and secondary stress how to distinguish so uh, in a word you have primary and secondary stress now primary the uh, table that i shared with the rules are exclusively for primary stress but there are certain words like entertainment where it is uh, like let's count it like entertainment four syllables now where does the stress fall uh, in entertainment if entertainment can be used as a noun and as a is a noun entertaining is a verb now if i look at it as a noun entertainment it comes right in the beginning entertainment so my primary stress would be right before e but my stress with for the t if you notice it is not silent could be towards the end that it is a secondary stress so if i emphasize more on entertainment and not entertainment or any other way the pronunciation changes so the secondary stress is the the least or uh, the, syl- the syllable that receives the least amount of emphasis thank you mr sir uh, madam pokri uh, sir do you have any uh, questions with you and manzoor sheik nandyala karnu uh, already part of the question already we have answered still madam there is a lot of vocabulary how can we remember the stress and the intonation noun verb adjectives so is there any easy way or tips so um, the the technique that i have worked on all these years is the table that i shared for the words categorize whatever word that you took this thing first make a column for meaning then make a column for pronunciation and then the form be thorough with the npf meaning pronunciation form the last column would be for your stress so it is a stage wise this thing that you have to cover all these areas and the last one would be intonation intonation you don't really have to worry about it it comes naturally from your l1 that is your mother tongue when you ask your ask a question place a request you modulate your voice use that understanding for english as well and the rules are pretty simple that will come through practice uh, take it up like one word a week 
but you do a in depth understanding to it use it in different contexts uh, try to in, practice it in speech in a real time situation and not just in front of the phone or a monitor so that way it it's, it will become easier for you when you collect a lot more words another area that i would suggest is uh, the oxford has a, a program called oxford 300 oxford sorry 3000 oxford 5000 where it challenges learners who are just beginning to learn with a set of words based on their competency level you could have a look at it online as well it's a very good program that you could try out thank you very much madam so uh hoker shinwa sir do you have any questions with you yeah no everything is okay oh that is the case thank you very much madam uh extraordinary presentation uh, and that too very useful uh, topic for uh, need of the hour also so once again i thank on behalf of all the teachers thank you very much and a few few instructions to the viewers so and even on repeated uh, instruction uh, request uh, people are uh, in the comment chat box they are uh, keep on posting good morning messages their name and school addresses please uh, we still uh, one more time we are requesting don't post good morning and uh, repeated uh, useless uh, com uh, comments or these things irrelevant things in the chat box and another uh, query we have found that uh, in quality aspects uh, you you need to uh, re fix a resolution of your device and your mobile device yourself there is a quality uh, tab so what kind of resolution uh, basing on your internet speed you need to uh, fix so that uh, uh, you will you you can able to get the letters and everything will be clearly visible to you that is up from your end you need to do and coming to live chat also uh, some people uh, some uh, viewers are asking that uh, want to stop uh, chatting and all these things on their screen that is also with you that setting also with you available with your device on your device so you need to disable live chat and you can uh, enable if you want so you need to do this uh, from your side so uh, again thank you very much for one and all thank you very much ma'am tomorrow we will meet uh, on day 7 with a very interesting topic uh, vocabulary and spoken english by dr k n shobha garu from chennai so we will we'll wait for tomorrow please uh, uh, stick on to the our channel subscribe to the channel and share the channel thank you very much thank you very much madam thank you Namaste. sir thank you to all the teachers as well thank you